Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here, and it's arrived, the Boutique Hotel Modular for 2022, and it looks great, and I can't wait to get started. Whoop whoop! Ooh, ah, oh, Lego Avalanche. Lovely jubbly. Mmm, lots and lots of bags. A base plate. Hopefully there's an instruction manual in there somewhere. <laughs> oh. oh, there it is. Golly, these boxes are big and deep. There we go. Wonderful. Let's get started. Well, I'm not going to linger on the full build or anything, but suffice to say that first impressions are good. It's looking very classy in real life as opposed to... Uh, uh, the original pictures when it was released and we've got a great big instruction manual almost 300 pages to tell you how to place the 14 bags worth of bricks correctly so yeah i've got number one and my base plate i'm going to get trucking now don't worry i'm not going to be stopping after every bag and giving out loads of spoilers and so on but i did think i'd stop here because well i've encountered a bit of a strange event really uh, this is a 1x2 tile in tan, and this whole stage is not supposed to involve any tiles that are 1x2 and in the tan colour. Uh, so that's very strange indeed. Why have I got this different piece? But then again, I'm one short of the same piece, but in dark bluish grey. So is there a issue with the packing of the bags? Or is maybe this one supposed to be tan and the instructions are not right? It's a problem that I've never come across before with a Lego set, so I'd be really interested in hearing about your experience if you've got the same set. Uh, that said, uh, I'm really enjoying this floor so far. We've got a wonderful employee of the boutique hotel with a nice natty uniform, and we're using some really good Pythagoras theorem with one, two, three studs across, one, two, three, four up, meaning the distance between all these round ones is five. Uh, and then we've got the door at right angles with three down and four across, meaning the distance is five. So I'm liking all of that. Uh, and I've already removed the one by two Technic bricks that I never include on all my modulars because I never know what floors uh, or what walls are going to be exposed when I've finished. And I've just replaced them with standard bricks. So yeah, do let me know how you get on with your tiles in your set. Well, an update on tile gate. Uh, you can use the tan tile here because it will be completely concealed. So crisis averted. <laughs> well, all of that was filmed on the 6th of January when I was early and before COVID struck the Hood household. So we now step forward to a completed build. But what a build it is. I can honestly say I really like this modular. It's a true return to form after a couple of less good modulars in the last few years uh, and it was a real joy to build as well. Uh, it's a feast of geometry with all this sort of angular stuff going on, real clever build techniques using new Lego pieces or old ones in new ways or colours. Uh, I even quite like the uh, colour palette now <laughs> in uh, real life. Even the furniture builds are really good inside and well thought out. And I even love the bathroom. <laughs> and you'd never thought I'd say that. So in short, uh, I think this is exactly what a modular building should be. Kind of a showcase of uh, Lego building at its finest. Uh, something really complex and enjoyable to build. So for me, this boutique hotel gets five stars, two thumbs up. Um, but let's look at some of the details and maybe go through some of the really minor, minor gripes I've got with this set, section by section. All right, so let's start with that ground floor then. And it is looking absolutely fantastic at this lower level. I think you'll agree. Uh, and before I start a build like this, I always consider where it's going to go in my city because there's a chance that I'd want to build the whole thing in mirror, i.e. having the art shop not on this side, but on this side, and then the steps and then everything completely flipped, which is very tricky to do when you're following the instructions. And you've got to make sure, of course, that there are no pieces that only work in one direction, because there are a few in Lego. Uh, but I think this one could have worked. Uh, but because I've got absolutely no idea where this is going to go in my city, I figured I'd build it in the normal way. Uh, well, essentially, 
actually, I've got the first world problem of having too many modulars to squeeze into a town. So I'm going to have to kind of shuffle things around, I think, uh, when we get upstairs later on. Anyway, let's start looking at some of the details of this wonderful build. Uh, and the first thing you'll notice is all the fantastic geometry with this uh, 345 build coming off at this angle. And it's really quite neatly done. One of my criticisms of the corner garage was that, well, it looked pretty ugly. Uh, and on the front, uh, you've got this sort of crease in there, but it doesn't look bad at all. Uh, then this is actually kind of at 90 degrees uh, to this side bit. So there's no ugliness on that side. And then the only bit you've really got is this kind of crease in here, which is the worst bit. And it is a bit more visible on the higher floors as well, but um, yeah, we'll come to that later. But generally speaking, it works very well indeed. And it is uh, structurally robust as well. So there's no problem with that. Now, looking at some of the details, uh, when I first saw the pictures of this set, I thought, oh, that downstairs looks incredibly sparse uh, without much in it at all, a bit empty. Uh, but when I look at it in real life with a few characters in it milling around and with this wonderful sort of bellhop sort of trolley thing, I think it looks quite full, actually. We've got the wonderful uh, compass uh, sort of decoration on the floor there. One of the uh, wonderful pieces of furniture being this nice uh, dark red sofa. Uh, and then we've got probably the best bit of the ground stairs, uh, of the downstairs or ground floor, which is this key rack, which is absolutely fantastic behind the reception desk. Uh, and it actually even doubles as the other side of a uh, picture in the gallery as well. So it's even more clever a build. I mean, it's absolute genius, really. So yeah, I really like that very much indeed. Uh, and then from this aspect, we've got a very sort of grand looking hotel. Uh, and then from this, whoop, not the fire hydrant off, we've got the smaller store as well, which I do like very much. Uh, now, the gallery is even better, really, because it's definitely a build done in kind of my style, in that it's absolutely packed and stacked. We've got one, two, three, four, and underneath there, a sculpture as well, five pieces of art. Uh, we've got uh, a desk in there as well. So it's absolutely packed and stacked, crammed to the uh, door, <laughs> and I really like that about it very much. Uh, we've got a really good sign when we put the lid back on. Um, but it just looks great through the windows as well. One of the pieces of art is a printed tile, uh, that Picasso sort of esque one there. Uh, and I don't mind that. At least they're all not printed tiles. That wouldn't be that good. Uh, but the best one of all is probably this absolutely genius uh, 3D sculpture of the Creator logo done in trans clear uh, headlight bricks, which is brilliant. Uh, and there's the back of that picture that's built into the. Um, a uh, key rack on the other side of the wall, uh, a Mondrian sort of esque one there. Uh, and all of these pictures wouldn't look out of place in my art museum by any stretch. Uh, then in between the two buildings, we've got a lovely notice board with sort of uh, references to all sorts of other modular sets. I'm not quite sure what these yellow things are on the bottom. They kind of look like post-it notes, but I no, I'm not too keen on them. Uh, we've got a fountain-y type uh, drinking fountain maybe here. Uh, and then some steps going up to the little bar area. And that's a really interesting and clever build technique to get all that in. It's, it's really very fun to do, actually. Uh, and the railings up here look really neat as well. Uh, the back is a little bit of a letdown uh, in that we've just got a large bin with a croissant in it. Uh, and you know, it doesn't look that great. Uh, and if I do have one problem, it's with the sort of ugliness that's sort of on show here. We've got a little bit here, a little bit here, and quite a big block there. Now, this wall may well be covered up uh, when we've got a neighbouring modular next door to it. But this one certainly won't be because, well, it's not on the edge. So I just figured they could have done a little bit better in covering up this. I mean... Something I've got knocking around is just this air conditioning unit from the Daily Bugle building. And the bottom one of these is a one by four plate. So why not have that kind of mounted on there to conceal all of the brown, which is to do with the uh, stairs build, and kind of have it like that? Because I think a boutique hotel would have air conditioning, especially if it's five stars. So I think that's an improvement that I'm going to do straight away. Uh, and then hopefully that wall will be covered by another neighbour as well. Yeah. Oh, and I think they probably could have used a slightly newer uh, sort of build technique for the hydrant that they're using in all the Friends and City sets now with a kind of domed uh, top. This looks a bit 
old if you ask me but uh yeah uh, i mean overall i'm incredibly happy with the ground floor uh, how it sort of uh, hangs together and all the details on the inside and as i say the building techniques on show are absolute genius uh, and i really like them a great deal well for the removal of a 1x4 plate and the addition of an air conditioning unit i think that solves that minor gripe that i had with that big block of different color in the middle of the wall uh, there's a few other imperfections here but i don't really mind those they blend in a lot more than that kind of odd rectangle did uh, now i've got the lid on the art gallery uh, and this is another area that's actually miles better in reality in my mind than the original pictures showed uh, it looked a bit pointless this tiny small bar on the outside but i think it's really cute now <laughs> i think it looks really nice and although some people don't like the tree build and have gone a bit more classic with the palm tree i think there are palms that go in weird different directions like this and the trunk is absolutely fantastic so i think i'm going to keep that as well uh, but my main thing that i really love on the front here is this lovely sign you know i love signs and although this one isn't 3d el cubo fine art is exactly what i would like to see on a set like this so it looks really really good uh so massive fan of that so now we can move on to the second floor and have a peer around that as well another thing that's new in this set is these wonderful little descriptive paragraphs in the instruction manual that give a lot more flavour to the build and backstories for the minifigures. Uh, and on page 152 is the accountant, who's got a wonderful little calculator in his briefcase, uh, and a little spiel about him. Now, both Mrs Hood and I trained as chartered accountants way back, uh, and that's CPA, I think, in the US. Uh, and our profession has never been represented in Lego form before. Clearly, it's far too boring. <laughs> uh, but here it is, and we're both very happy about that. Uh, and it says the accountant is in town to assist with the sale of the art gallery's masterpieces. And I must say that Mrs Hood and I are both inundated by uh, requests from art galleries to sell their masterpieces. That's probably what we do, uh, you know, all the time, quite frankly. Uh, but more likely, <laughs> in reality, it's to be to audit the accounts from the Brick Bank set. Boo. Much more boring. And here is the accountant in the bigger of the two rooms on this floor, as suits his stature. <laughs> and then we've got the backpacker kind of out on the balcony of the smaller room. And... It's a really nice uh, kind of shaped exterior and colours with this uh, light nougat colour. I do actually like it in the flesh. Haha, <laughs> no pun intended. Uh, but yeah, we've got quite a repetitive sort of form with all these windows going around three sides. Uh, and then the fourth wall, which does have some more unsightliness, but that one really should be covered up by a neighbouring modular. Uh, so that won't be on show, so it doesn't really matter as much. Um, and we've got some flag details. And I really like this bit, which really brings us onto the geometry on this floor because we've got most of it built in a normal style. Uh, but then this whole section here is built at a complete angle using wedge plates that kind of fit perfectly. And when you're building this, you're thinking, well, that's not going to marry up to that very well. Surely this is an illegal building technique, but it all works. It all fits absolutely perfectly. It really makes your mind boggle. And that's why I think partially the build process for this was absolutely fantastic uh, and really enjoyable. So, yeah, I can recommend this set for that alone. Uh, and it's a bit fragile when you're building it until it reconnects with this sort of top sort of connections as well. But the end product is really amazing i mean there's absolutely no sort of sign of anything untoward going on there but it also works perfectly on the inside i mean it looks absolutely perfect uh we've got the little bits of the angled bricks there but that doesn't look too bad the only bit you could really minorly gripe about is this sort of crack up the back but you know even that doesn't look very bad really so i think we really have to give uh, a round of applause to the designer here for creating such a difficult structure in such well a seamless way so i'm a great fan of this uh, and this floor alone is kind of worth the uh, admission price so to speak uh, and then we've got some really good furniture in here we've got a nice big uh, sort of armoire type cupboard here with flappy doors desk chair uh, bed swivel chair another bed kind of a dresser here with chair 
Uh, and it's all really, really nice. Uh, and the other thing is, uh, before I got this, I was worried about whether this would be um, scalable in the sense of buying more middle floors to kind of make the building a lot taller. Uh, because I'm kind of wondering whether the uh, repetition of the stairway especially would work when kind of mounted above itself. And well, in short, I think it will. Uh, so I think one thing I will be doing to amend this is making another one of these floors. Now, all the pieces for this that are novel to this set aren't all available yet on bricks and pieces. But when they are, I will be buying everything I need for another one of these floors uh, and putting it into the mix, proving the point. So yeah, I didn't really want to buy a whole second set just for one middle floor. That seems a bit extravagant to me. But yeah, doing it the old fashioned way should work very well. Now, one thing that also struck me when I was doing this was kind of the geometry of this top floor uh, in that I thought it was a bit more like the Flatiron building, that very famous building in New York, where if you kind of put these two at equal angles, the end would kind of be pointing directly towards you. And well, it isn't. If you have the end pointing directly towards you, this one goes directly back and this one off at an angle. Uh, and I get that now once uh, once I built it because of all the sort of geometry that's going on, it makes a lot of sense. But it does mean that uh, I think that this building only looks great from certain angles, kind of like that where you can see both of the sides going back. Uh, and as soon as you get to something like that, you really can't see much of that side because it's not visible. And once you get past, well, pretty much that angle, the same is true of that side. So I think when we get to placing this in the Lego room, we really are going to have to make sure that this view is the view that is visible from the main viewing angle, because it really is the best one where you can see, well, the most stuff, really. Uh, we don't want all of it hidden behind a corner. But yeah, uh, not much to really show, but so much to appreciate in this floor. Right onto the third floor, and in many respects it's more of the same, with the same sort of floor plan with the clever wedge plates and so on, all dovetailing perfectly. But wow, look at the outside, that is completely different. Uh, and this sangreen kind of side of roof bit is the bit that I was very much looking forward to building when uh, I saw the original pictures. And it is very creative with absolute genius of clever piece combinations and connections and so on that go around three of the four sides, with that one being most likely to be concealed by a neighbouring building. Uh, and I suppose the only real weakness in that is this crack that goes up all of the floors. And here, this is the worst one, because you can see a lot of the different colours that are involved on the building there. But that really is as bad as it gets, so not too bad. And the reason why you can see these sort of tan and white colours through is because all of these exterior walls with the roof on are actually double thickness, so one, two, one, two, uh, all the way around. And that's so we can have this lovely tan and white sort of combination of interior walls uh, to keep the inside views looking absolutely fantastic, whilst also having this really complicated build uh, for the outside as well. So one doesn't sort of bleed through to the other. Uh, so we've got this wonderful suite, which looks very nice indeed. And all these angled walls and everything, no space gets wasted whatsoever. Uh, the bathroom, you can see why I like it. Look at that fantastic bath with some lovely sort of expensive uh, soap and so on. The toilet in the corner and the sink and even an actual mirror, a printed tile there. That looks really good. Uh, the stairway up and the furniture in here. We've got a TV with somebody making a speech. It's kind of in black and white, uh, kind of keeping up the theme of well, all these modulars being maybe uh, in yesteryear as opposed to modern buildings. Uh, I really like the door onto the uh, balcony there. These lovely little lamps on the side of the bed where well, we've got chocolate <laughs> laid out for us. I mean, this is the room the accountant should be having, surely. Um, <laughs> then we've got this lovely old armoire in dark brown, which I love, uh, and a black leather sofa and a bottle of wine as well. Well, they're really treating the occupants of this room. So, yeah, I think this looks absolutely fantastic. Really bright, vibrant and um, very special. And as I say, the build of all of this sort of thing is really enjoyable as well. Now, I don't think you can scale this build, i.e. buy two of them and sort of have them on top of each other because it's not really going to work very well with the footprint not being the same and so on. Uh, not without serious modification anyway. Um, but you really could go to town and kind of do another one that was slightly smaller and smaller and smaller and make it a lot taller if you wanted. 
But yeah, as it stands, it really doesn't need much change to it at all. Now, I have heard criticism that uh, this floor has a bathroom and the other floor doesn't. So how do they get uh, clean? <laughs> but I don't, I don't agree with criticisms like that, really, because, I mean, there's loads of things missing if you think about it. Uh, where's the uh, cupboard for the housekeeping? Or where's, well, the kitchen? Because, well, we haven't got a kitchen to do breakfasts and then we'd need a dining room as well. And there's no toilet for the staff then. You just can't go in that route. Uh, you know, there's too many things missing. It's Lego at the end of the day. Uh, and I think the fact that this one is a really swanky uh, looking bathroom really gives emphasis to this being a very uh, expensive sort of high-end room. Uh, and as a result, I think it's very well placed in the set. Uh, but if we move on to the roof, the crown and glory, we've got the final piece of the dome, which I also really like. And that's a good, interesting build as well. Nice railings around the edges. I thought this was incredibly boring as well, but it actually fits quite well uh, in reality. Uh, and we've got the uh, angled bricks there kind of holding or reinforcing that join together on the uh, top as well, whilst looking quite innocuous. Skylight in there. Uh, and the only gripe I have with this is why on earth there aren't railings on that last side. Even if this is abutting another building, I think it should have that. So when I get the pieces for my additional middle floor, I think I'll be getting enough of these railing pieces to finish off that edge. It just seems a little incomplete, but... Like my other minor gripes uh, and the air conditioning sort of amendment I did on the ground floor, it's very little things really that, that uh, detract from this set. So I think it is absolutely great. So let's put it all back together again. So overall, I think this set is amazing, as you've probably gathered. Uh, the building techniques have made it probably the best build that I've done for a couple of years, I think. Uh, in the actual build process. Uh, and I think the combination of sort of parts and techniques that are used just wouldn't have even been possible five years ago just because, you know, those new parts didn't even exist. So, yeah, it's it's a real joy. If you have been missing recent modulars and aren't sure about this one, I really would go ahead. I think you won't regret it for one moment. I think the only potential weakness that I haven't yet solved is in placement. Uh, I did mention earlier that basically this had uh, very few angles where it looked absolutely at its best, being all the ones I'm kind of <laughs> showing you now. But basically, uh, I think it looks a lot worse, for example, just say like that, if it had a neighbour on here, because you're not getting all the benefit of that fantastic shape. But likewise, if you kind of look at it from this side, even from like here, you're losing the entire side of the building kind of behind this turret here. So you don't see that either. So I think there's a very sort of narrow band of angles where this set is displayed at its absolute finest. Uh, and that's why uh, I'm going to have to really be careful when I place this in my Lego room to make sure that from the main viewing angle, or at least many viewing angles, this is the view we see. Because I really want to show off that fantastic geometry that we've enjoyed building uh, to its absolute finest. So will I have to move other buildings? <laughs> I hope not. Uh, to make this look at its best. Uh, maybe it'll cause an entire modular reshuffle. Who knows? Let's go up to the Lego room and find out for real. Okay, here we are in the Lego room. And don't worry, I'm not going to be putting the boutique hotel in the opening of Brick Bay into the sea, blocking my bridges. No, I'm just trying to demonstrate the angle that I kind of want to be visible from the main viewing angle, which is where I'm standing. Uh, which very much limits where I can put it in the city. So I think if we start to our left on the original run of modulars, I can't have it where the town hall is because the uh, art shop will be all round the corner near that tree. I don't think that will work. Uh, so the next spot that might work is where the Grand Emporium is. That would definitely mean we could see both sides of that lovely corner part, but... I really do like the Grand Emporium there, partially because it's such a grand building. Uh, it's nice and tall, though this one will be in due course. Uh, the monorail would have to fit behind it well because it does get very close there. Uh, but this building, the uh, hotel, is a lot more intricate and I think it would bear closer uh, scrutiny really. And that one's a lot sort of less detailed and it being further away is probably 
to our benefit. So yeah, that is a possible place, but I'm not too sure. Uh, then we could put it where the Palace Cinema is, but also I do like that there as well with the, the wrestling scene viewable from behind. And that one's even more important that it's facing us uh, because the back of that tower does look a bit odd. So I'm loath to move that. Uh, then we've got the second run of modulars here, which is above the beach. And most of those look really good there as well. I could put it on one of the two ends, either in place of the diner or the uh, Parisian. But wow, they both really work there as well. And in fact, I'm not sure it'd work at all anyway, because their backyards get kind of taken up by the uh, platform there, platform four of the station. And I don't think there's enough room on the back of our boutique hotel to kind of accommodate any of that. Hmm, no. So then we flip onto our third run of modulars, which is quite short. I'm definitely not moving fast food corner. So that really only leaves the police station there. And then we're really not seeing that angle at all, are we? In fact, quite the opposite. We're seeing the worst side of the building because uh, the kind of crease that we don't like on the back would be probably the most visible thing. So that's not ideal either. So yeah, we're really torn between a brand new line of modulars or where the Grand Emporium is. Hmm, and then, well, where would we put that? So I'm thinking that we could have a new run of modulars kind of along here from where that uh, uh, tanker truck is all the way up to where some of the fairground is kind of waiting to be installed. And <laughs> it's not ideal because a lot of that is kind of facing the wall of the Lego room, which these buildings are against. But you can see down the road all of that detail. And I think the angle is pretty much perfect for the uh, matter we've discussed with the boutique hotel if it goes right on that corner. Now, one bad thing <laughs> is that I had planned for my uh, supermarket build to go there, to be quite honest with you. But I suppose if we put this here and it looks great, then that will just create another problem for another day. <laughs> yeah, solve one problem, create another. Uh, so, yeah, I think it's probably easier to try it there first than take out the uh, Grand Emporium uh, and Casino. So I'm going to do that with this. See how it looks. Now, bearing in mind we're looking at the back of this thing, I think it looks actually quite good here. Now, ignore the fact that we've got this rather large blank wall because there will be a neighbour to this and start up a whole new street of modulars kind of facing the wall. Not the best idea, but nonetheless. Uh, so that won't be a problem. We've got a backyard here, which actually really fits very well with the sort of cutoff, uh, where the cutoff starts for my standing hole uh, for all of our open back buildings along here. Uh, so that works all right. Uh, and then you can kind of glimpse through this lovely gap here. Not only the scenes going on, the mayhem of the uh, Daily Bugle, or rather, I really should call it the Brick Nottingham Post building with all of the Ultra Agents, but you can also see the lovely sand green roof and all those windows and stuff through the gap, and even peer down here into that little bar area underneath the <laughs> helicopter landing pad, <laughs> of course. Uh, but it's always going to be a very congested city mine, so yeah, I don't think that looks that bad. So we can look at it from the street view as well. And that's looking pretty good. Ignore the uh, stunt man there jumping over the bus. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think it's more important that we look at the uh, other two main vistas for this area uh, from the other standing hole and from that main viewing angle from the door. And we'll see how it looks from there. But yeah, I don't mind it there at all, actually. In fact, I really like it. Well, from the first standing hole, we can't see much of it, to be fair, uh, but it will be one story higher in the long run. So if we can sort of imagine that the green roof would kind of be at this level rather than the one it is. Um, but, you know, it fits really well on the end there because of the sort of angles that are going on. And we've got the art shop just tucked in in that little nook <laughs> in between the hospital uh, and the hotel itself. Yeah, it's a good bit of colour in there. I really quite like it. It adds a lot of interest to what otherwise might be a very sort of uh, parallel street with all the buildings facing exactly the same direction. Uh, and obviously the turret bit is kind of right on the corner. 
uh, and really acts like a kind of warning for where the corner uh, in the road is. So, yeah, I don't dislike that at all. Uh, I think it will be better with one more story in the middle, most certainly. Yeah, what do you think? Right, so back full circle to the main viewing angle near the door to the Lego room, most important of all. And there is the view. We're kind of looking at it from maybe not exactly perfect, but definitely what I was trying to protect, that main sort of end-on view. And we can see all the windows and both of the walls on both sides. And we can see that tree kind of squished in a little bit against the hospital. And I suppose one thing that is definitely weird is that when you're in that bar having a nice drink, you'll be able to look in at one of the wards and see some very ill people undergoing treatment. <laughs> in fact, it might be that one where the guy's getting the prostate exam. I'm not sure. <laughs> that really would be uh, a bit amusing, uh, if not for you, for him. <laughs> yeah. But I do very much like the fact that the turret is on the corner. I do like that. And again, we have to remember that it's going to be one story higher when it's got another middle floor in it. So I think it looks quite good. And it really adds the sort of real life effect if we go to a sort of lower perspective, when you can kind of see one building peeking around the corner of the other, uh, being, you know, it glimpsing out from behind the uh, police uh, station here with the uh, super secret police base on top. Yeah, I like it. So it's a bit of an un uh, unconventional placement in a way, in that it is largely facing a brick wall, a real life brick wall. But as my uh, city is designed to sort of look like it continues in all directions for much more than I've actually got uh, on show, I think it actually works because why on earth wouldn't you have big buildings there? And to be honest, when I do more modulars of my own design or buy ones in the future, then, well, they have to go somewhere. So I either have to take ones out or just add to another row there. Uh, and I think that is the best solution. So, yeah, again, tell me what you think. But I think that works quite well. So if you have this set, I'd be very much interested in your views on it. I definitely think it is a major success and much better than the original pictures, which I was a bit negative about, I suppose, in retrospect. Uh, I'd also be interested in your views on my placement. And you must bear in mind that it will be one story higher, of course, uh, which will be more in keeping with the rest of that street. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of fitting in well already, if you ask me. Uh, so as always, thank you very much for watching. It is appreciated. Do remember to like, comment and subscribe for more awesome LEGO videos. And if you want to send something into the channel, you can to the normal address. Uh, and if you value this channel, there are many ways in which you can support it. Do check out the links in the description below. Uh, next video will be a brick haul on Wednesday. And then on Friday, uh, we'll be doing another uh, build of some description, which I haven't yet decided. <laughs> so do let me know if you've got a preference. Uh, I'm in the mood to do more trains, but then that's always the case. If it was up to me, we'd probably just do that. But uh, anyway, uh, whatever we get up to, I'm sure we have great fun. So until then, see you. <laughs>